Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. On today's video tutorial, guys, we are going to be going through the area rule proof, right? When you are basically given an obtuse angle triangle, right? So before we even get started with this proof, please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Please make sure that you click on that notification bell so that you get notified every single time I upload a new video tutorial, guys. And also don't forget to give this video tutorial a huge thumbs up because that really helps the channel grow and it helps the channel to reach more learners that want to better their mathematics marks. So without any further ado, guys, let's get started with today's video tutorial. Right, guys. So in today's video tutorial, we're going to be going through the area rule proof if you are basically given an obtuse um, angle triangle. All right. So before we even get started, guys, it's very important that I go through what is an obtuse angle triangle. Right. And an obtuse angle triangle is a triangle where one of the interior angles, right, of that triangle is an obtuse angle. Right. So in this case, we already can already see that our angle B, right, is our obtuse angle. Right? Okay. And an obtuse angle, guys, is an angle that is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180. Okay. So we can see that this angle, right? This is zero degrees, this is 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees. We can see that this angle, this angle here, okay, our angle B is actually more than 90 degrees, but it's less than 180 degrees. So we can see that now here, in this case, we are dealing with an obtuse angled triangle, right? So how do you prove the area rule given an obtuse angled triangle? Okay, so very important, guys, when we start off, we already know that, okay, our side AC, right, is a side that is opposite our angle B, so we can write that as small letter B, right, our side AB is opposite our angle C, so we can write that as, as length C, right, and our side BC is opposite our angle A, so we can write that as small letter A. What's very important for us to even note here, right, is that, okay, so same thing with what we basically did when we are dealing with an acute angle triangle, right? If you are calculating an area, right, if you have to basically determine an area of any triangle, guys, we know area of a triangle is half base times perpendicular height. So that is going to be our starting point to basically proving the area rule, okay? So this is basically the proof, right? We already know that area of triangle ABC is equal to half, what is the half base multiplied by perpendicular height, okay? And then, in this case, guys, we can see that we do not have a perpendicular height, okay? So that is where we now start to do our constructions, right? So we're going to put our perpendicular height here, okay? Right? And we're going to call this line A. D, okay, and now what do we now see about this whole triangle, right? So in this case, right, if you look at our triangle ABC, right, what is the base of that triangle? We can see that our base, right, so it's half, our base is A, multiplied by our perpendicular height now, right, is our height AD, okay, that is our perpendicular height, okay, okay, and then now, right, we already know that our included angle, um is our angle b right let's say for example our angle b was our included angle and we were given sides a and c right so we already know that what we're trying to prove is this is what we're trying to prove that the area of triangle a b c is equal to half right side your side is a times your side is c times sine of the angle between these two known sides, right? So that is this is basically what we're trying to prove, right? This is where we're trying to get, okay? Right? So in this case, we already know that we're dealing with triangle ABD, okay? 
So here we know that triangle ABD, right, the triangle that now has basically formed um, from our construction is going to help us to get to what we're trying to prove, okay? So if we focus on triangle ABD, D, right, we're trying to basically determine the length of AD, right, using our trig ratios because here we now see that we are basically dealing with a right angle triangle. So we can use our trig ratios to help us basically calculate an unknown length of a side okay and then guys right we already know that we want to determine what is sine of this angle our angle B okay so for us to be able to determine what our angle B is equal to right let's say for example this angle here is equal to theta okay okay so the angle from here if you, we know that when we basically measure our angles, we measure our angles starting from our positive x-axis, right? And you go in the anti-clockwise direction. So if we move from there to there, let's say, for example, we know that this angle is theta. How would we get this angle, right? So we already know that. So to get this angle, we'll just say 180 degrees minus theta that is going to be our angle b right and then we are going to be basically using that um to help us get to um the proof of our area rule okay so in this case we'll say sine of b is equal to we already know that it's ad opposite over hypotenuse what is our hypotenuse our hypotenuse is a b right however we already know that right sine of b what is that angle b equal to okay that angle b is actually equal to 180 minus theta okay or we can also say 180 minus b because at the end of the day we're just trying to find out what is angle b so we can even say 180 minus b right okay okay because if we already know that this angle here is angle B. If you measure this angle from the positive x axis and you move in the anti clockwise direction to this line, that is our angle B, right? However, we are dealing with a, um, triangle ABD and we want to determine what this angle is. So to get what that angle is, we just say 180 degrees minus B. Okay, so here we can just say sine of B is actually sine of 180 degrees minus b which is equal to a d over what is a b we already know that a b can actually be written as c so it's divided by c okay and then all right what do we now know okay we're trying to prove um we're trying to basically determine the length of a d so if you multiply it by c on both sides right what is our a d now our a d is equal to c times sine of 180 degrees minus b which is equal to ad okay and then what do we know about sine of 180 minus b right we know that okay in the second quadrant right if you know this all students take care right in the second quadrant sine is positive right so we can just change it to sine i mean c times sine of b because in the second quadrant our sine is positive so you can just leave it as sine of b which is equal to a d right and then here we already have our equation one and we have our equation two all that's left for us to do is substitute our equation two into our equation one one to basically prove our um area rule okay therefore the area of triangle a b c right if you are basically working with an obtuse angle triangle is equal to half right we said a times our a d now we already know what our length of our a d is in this case which is c sine of b and we have basically proven our area rule okay so that is it in this question, what's very important when basically doing this proof is that when you're dealing with an obtuse angle triangle, we can obviously just use your Cartesian claim um, as a guide for you to see what's going on when you're doing the proof, right? We already know that at triangle ABC, right? Your length of AC can be written as B. Your length of BC can be written as A because that's the side that's opposite our angle A. So you can write it as small letter A. And the length of 
a b can be written as small letter c okay to start off our proof you know to calculate the area of any triangle top base times perpendicular height okay what is the base of triangle a b c it's a right it's a that is our base our b c and what is our perpendicular height our perpendicular height is a d all right and then the next step we know that we want to determine the length of a d all right and that's when we're like how do you measure an angle when you measure an angle you start from the positive x-axis and you move in an anti-clockwise direction to basically the terminal side right okay so in this case we move in an anti-clockwise direction to line a b that is our angle b right however how can we determine this angle b in triangle a b d right we can basically determine that angle because if we know that this angle is b right to get this angle we just 180 minus b that will give us that angle, right? So we know that if you want sine of B, right? Sine is opposite AD over your hypotenuse AB, right? And then we already know that this angle is actually equal to 180 minus B. You substitute it, right? Which is equal to AD, what you're looking for, over your hypotenuse, which is C, right? Your hypotenuse is C. From there, it becomes easy because you cross multiply, you multiply by C, multiply by C on both sides, and then you'll have that your AD is actually equal to C times sine of B. Then we are basically done because now all we need to do is we need to substitute equation 2 into equation 1, and we have basically proven our area rule. Okay, so please make sure that you are subscribed if you've made it this far, and also give this video tutorial a huge thumbs up if you really appreciated um, it and you enjoyed the explanation and you actually understood it, guys. And also don't forget to share the video tutorial with your friends. And the next proof, guys, I'm going to be taking you guys through the cosine rule proof. That is it, guys, and I'll see you guys on my next upload, Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. Bye, guys. Oh, 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 oh,